In this video we're using Substance 3D Designer for different brush strokes. Let's go over the keynotes and parameters we'll use first. The gradient dynamic helps for more complex gradients through remapping colors from a grayscale input into a new gradient ramp. Gradient orientation sets how to interpret the gradient input horizontally or vertically. The multi-directional warp node is a great node to warp shapes in an interesting way. It distorts your shape in a few set directions based on an intensity input. Warp angle is used to adjust the warp directions. The directions parameter lets you choose how many directions to warp. With the anisotropic noise node you generate the stretched noise with hard edges in one but smooth transitions in the other direction. With X and Y amount you control the noise line amount and proportions. The smoothness slider controls the transition between lines on the X axis. Let's build this basic setup together and learn how to create brush strokes which are useful as paintbrush alpha or to generate automatic strokes. For this quick tip example we start with the shape node. As shape we use the brick pattern because it has the option to smooth the outline. Let's increase the pattern specific for that smooth outline. Then we adjust the scale and bring down the size X to bring it closer to a brush stroke shape. Experimenting with different shapes might give you other interesting brushes. We continue with a gradient linear 1 node and connect it to the gradient dynamic grayscale input. As gradient input we'll use a Gaussian noise node with a scale of 9. Now we connect the gradient dynamic node to a multidirectional warp node. To deform it in one direction we adjust the directions. Let's increase the angle slightly to see a result. Now we can affect the strength of the effect with the intensity slider. The cool thing with the multidirectional warp node is that we deform the shape and it stays in the center. Let's bring in more small details. We duplicate the multidirectional warp node and adjust the angle for a vertical warp effect. As intensity input we'll use a moisture noise texture. Reduce the pattern size Y helps to have a more vertical stretched noise. For more vertical details we'll use an anisotropic noise node. To have less lines we decrease the Y amount to 80 and rotate it for a vertical alignment. A blur HQ grayscale with an intensity of 1 is great to blur the hard edges. Now we use the overlay blend mode for a nice effect. For a final bend we'll use the directional warp node. As input we use a gradient linear 2 node. Increase the intensity to 40 for a stronger effect. When using this node the shape moves with the warp direction. Here's our final base result of the setup we did before. It can be used as an alpha in Painter. Let's dive into some variations and examples of this tip. To splatter the brush strokes I use the tile generator node. As pattern I choose image input to use a custom input. When I work with overlapping shapes I generally first adjust the luminance random for color and heat variation. Then I change the blending mode to max for better visibility and variation in heat. I increased the symmetry random to 1 for more variation. It then mirrors the image input both horizontally and vertically. The size mode I changed to normal size. Increasing the scale results in bigger strokes. I further adjusted various random parameters to add variation and interest. For more advanced control the tile sampler is best. It lets you use input maps to control specific parameters. In this case we'll make our brush strokes align with shape directions. Any grayscale image can be used as base. I connect it into a normal node to get the tangent base normal map. I connect this normal node into the tile sampler's vector map input and then increase the vector map multiplier on the rotation to 1. You can use any kind of normal map. Perlin noise, paraboloid and pyramid are just examples. If you want to learn more you can download and open the graphs shown in the video. Thanks for watching and we would love to hear your thoughts, ideas and suggestions for future quick tips. So let us know them in the comments. See you in the next quick tip episode.